Right, so here are the parts in varying levels of difficulty. So we'll start off with Don't Stop Believing and there are two sections of the song. The full chords are E major, B major, C sharp minor, A major, and do all that again. Instead of C sharp minor, G sharp minor. And then the other section sits on the A. the E, back to the A, back to the E, street lights, people, and then it finishes Okay, so those are the only two sections for the whole song. So I'll go through the different levels of playing the rhythm parts. You can start by just playing root notes. So all on your low E string. Here is an E note, open E. You then have a B at fret seven. You have a C sharp at fret nine. An A at fret five. And then for later on, the G sharp is right behind that at fret four. And then straight eighth notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sounds like this. plenty of alternative places to play those notes. For example, B is fret 7 on the E string, but it can also be fret 2 on the A string. So there's no reason why you can't go E, B. Likewise, C sharp is at fret 4. And you can also have A as an open. So feel free to explore where some of the other notes might be. So that's the root notes. I'll play that a couple of times so you can practice along. So one, two, three, four. If you want to make that more interesting, you can turn your single root notes into power chords. A power chord is simply taking a root note, and then the fifth note of that chord, or scale, so in the case of E major, chord. So here I've got my open E and my B note 
on fret 2 of the A string. So if I play those together, it sounds much, much more chunky. And what you might notice is my right hand just rests on the bridge, and then I get a bit of muting from my palm. It sounds a bit nicer than going. It sounds a bit more chunky. So if we take that power chord shape, you'll notice that the root note is on the E string, and the other note of the power chord, the fifth, is two frets higher on the very next string. Now we can take this chord shape, this power chord shape that I'm sort of dummying here. Obviously you don't need your first finger to play an open string, but look at that shape. And then what we can do is move the, the finger that was playing E, or pretending to, I'm going to shift that shape up until we get to a B note at fret 7. And we should still keep the same relationship between our first finger and our third finger. First finger's now on fret 7, and the third finger has followed it onto the next string two frets higher, fret 9. So we play those two together. Sounds like that. One off the other. Now obviously that's quite a difficult change to make if you've never done this before. So what I would suggest is maybe just start with the B, get that ready, and you can chunk away on your E, and then go straight to your B power chord, because now that shape's movable. We can either move it up two frets to C sharp, and then the first finger can move down to the A, same shape. Or later on, after the B, we'll go to the G sharp. Right, I've gone through that quickly, so hope you're following. Let's see if we can put all that together. We've got our E power chord, our B power chord, our C sharp, our A, and remember G sharp is just before A. And that's been substituted for the C sharp later on. Sounds like this. Two, three, four. sense. Like I said before, you can still find all these root notes in different places, so if you'd rather play, for example, the B here, fret 2 of the A string, you can go easily from E to B, up two frets to C sharp, and you've got this little maneuver diagonally to get to the A. Try them out, see which one is easiest or sounds the best. Right, the next ooh, hello. The next one that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the chord shape of E and then rearrange the fingers used to play that, and you'll see that you can use the same shape to play prettier sounding chords that aren't just two notes. So an E chord normally looks like this: big big open E, all the strings. We have Open E, second fret on the A string with our second finger, second fret on our D string with our third finger, first finger on the first fret of the G string, and the last two strings, B and E, are open.
Okay, it sounds much nicer than, or not nicer, but much bigger and janglier than. Right, so we can take that chord. You still apply some palm muting. If you want to. But what we're going to do is we're going to refret everything with different fingers. So instead of our first finger being here, that will be our middle finger. Hang on, where am I? There. The third finger is going to replace finger two, and the pinky finger is going to replace finger three. So it now looks like this. Still all the same notes, just different fingers doing the jobs of the other ones. This frees our first finger up, and now we can fret our root note. So whether that's E or B, or the other notes we're going to find in a second. But this chord remains the same shape. So we take our E chord, and then we're going to take our first finger, and we're going to slide it up until it's a B note. So E, F, G, a, B. Now I've only played the notes that I'm holding down because I've not taken the open strings with me. I haven't squeezed them down, which we'll look at in a second. You can take your E chord, just play the first four notes, and all those notes have been fretted just seven frets higher to make a B chord instead. All right, the same is true if you want to do an A. Just it will be starting on an A note. And then you're gonna say, hang on a minute, but we've got, we've got to play a C sharp minor chord. How do we do that with a shape that's been taken from an E major? And I'm gonna say you're very correct. We can't just shift that up there because otherwise we'll get the wrong type of chord. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to move our first finger to that alternative C sharp, which is at fret four, and use the same shape, but now everything's on a string that way towards the floor. This shape really is a minor chord, and it's come from an A minor. Much sadder sounding chord. So same, same principles, but now minor. Okie dokie. So now if I play that in our chord progression, we'll have E with those fingers. Slide to fret seven for B. Move that whole shape up to the fourth fret and across the strings for the minor shape. And then we'll move to our A on the E string, major shape. Massively, if you accidentally hit the open strings, you might have heard me do that. It actually sounds quite nice, it just so happens in this key. So don't worry about that. And you might hear that as I'm changing chords, I'm still keeping my right hand going. And you hear some open strings, but it just doesn't get in the way, it just keeps the rhythm flowing. So this hand stays on autopilot like a machine, bashing out the rhythm. Cool, so that's all fine, but we need to play G sharp minor. So there's not really a nice way of doing this. So what we're just going to do for the G sharp is we'll play the normal power chord. See, the problem with G sharp minor is there isn't a G sharp note that's low enough on the A string for us to use our C sharp minor shape, but moved. We'd have to move all the way up to this one. G 
sharp is at fret 11 on your A string and it just sounds a bit weird. Um, it works but it's just really odd. So what we can do instead is just use the power chord for G sharp, everything else, these funky E chords. One, two, three, four. So the last thing that we can do is we could turn them into full bar chords. So this requires you to have a really strong first finger. Good luck. I would first start out by trying to flatten your finger across all the strings on one fret. See if you can do that. So let me show you how it works. We take our first finger. Normally we would curl our finger over and use the fingertip and wedge that down on a string. If I turn this way, you should probably see, oops, uh, it's nice and curly. So in your finger, you've got like th three different knuckles. You've got your sort of fist knuckle there. You've got this knuckle here, which you knock on your doors with. And then you've also got this little knuckle here, which allows you to curl your finger all the way. And that's the one that helps us fret. So check this out. Hold down your B string with your fingertip at fret five, for example. That should sound like this. And if you've done it right, you can play the E string underneath. If you've done it wrong and you've not got a lovely curly finger, you'll be getting in the way. So make sure you're not. And then if we collapse this knuckle, it falls flat. Now I've got my fingerprint over two strings and they're both ringing nice and clearly. And this knuckle here, my knocking knuckle, sort of giving leverage to your fingerprint to force down towards the fretboard rather than pulling around this way. You've got something pushing down. So that's the secret. You take that, try it across three strings, four strings. The further you go, the flatter your finger has to be because you've got to get more finger across more strings. Make sure your thumb is on the back of the neck, giving you something to push against. And eventually you'll be able to get the whole finger nice and flat. Perfect bar. Takes a bit of time. Lots can go wrong, just be patient. And if we take those chords from before, so E, and when we moved up to fret seven with that, and we just fretted the fingertip on our first finger, we got that sound. Maybe with the open strings. Sounds quite pretty. We could bar the first finger, so everything goes flat, and we get this. Seven, nine, nine, eight, seven, seven. If you do that for all the chord shapes, that's like top level, top level chords there. And it means that when we come to the G sharp, Rather than just playing a power chord, three notes, you can get a full six notes. It's important that everything's nice and flat, especially for this G strings note. If you don't do it right, you can hear it buzzing. Got to give it a nice big squeeze down. You might want to help it, help it out with your middle finger. That's not the worst thing in the world to do. So G sharp minor. 
and that's your bar chords. Try and put it all together. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So those are all the different bits for those chords. The next thing we'll look at is the main riff. So whilst those chords are going on, um, there's like this pumping riff in the background following what the chords are doing and just climbing through the scale notes. For example, E climbs all the way to B off the first two chords. E. G sharp, B. One, two, three, four. Right, so the riff goes starting from your low E, you're going to visit a B note, a C note, and an A note, but playing notes of the scale, the E major scale, in between. So we go from E to B by playing an F sharp and a G sharp in between, fret 2 and fret 4 of your E string. A bit slowly. We next have C sharp, D sharp, back to C sharp. Up together. We then play D sharp to E and land on the A note. And then we play that again to lead us back to the start of the E. That second part. All together. Instead of obviously going to the C sharp, I went from E to B. And instead of going back to the C sharp, I went to G sharp. I played a couple of G sharps, up to my A, and then my little lead back to E. So what I'll try and do now is I'll play the riff, and then try and sort of hint where the chords would be as well. So, sounds like this. One, two, three, four. that makes sense so obviously you don't play both parts at the same time that's 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 not the whole point we're an ensemble we want to play different bits at the same time so we'll have some people doing the chords some people do the root notes some people playing that little riff boss okay the other bit we need is the bridge section dead easy it's an A chord followed by an E chord repeated but then the end is a B chord Two, three, four.
And that is all the sections. Obviously you don't have to play the full chords for that, if you just have to play them root notes, do that. Power chords cool too. And experiment with the rib with the ribbons. Experiment with the rhythms and see what works. So we've done all the rhythm parts. What's left to do now is the melodies. Now, don't stop believing is in the key of E major. And if you know a little bit of theory, you'll know what a relative minor is. If you don't, don't panic, just trust me. The relative minor of E major is C sharp minor. So we've got E major, C sharp minor. They're the same keys, same sets of notes, just different perspective of thinking about them. What this means is we can play our minor pentatonic scale starting on C sharp. So C sharp's at fret 9. And if we play our minor pentatonic scale, we get this. So I've got frets 9 and 12 on the E string, 9 and 11 on the next three strings, 9 and 12 on the last two strings. Now mm, all good pop songs or pop melodies tend to f use this scale, they tend to use some form of pentatonic scale. So it just sounds nice, it's not got some of the extra notes that the major scale has, so it's just nice and simple. Now. Um, the nice thing to do for your learning would be to get you to work out all the, the vocal parts by listening to them and then playing them back. So I'll give you a hint maybe with this and then maybe I'll put up a video with the whole thing on. Or maybe I'll do a performance at the end. So the first bit we've got starting on the ninth fret of the B string. In fact all of the verse is played up with just four notes. We have the B string notes and the G string notes. It's some version of some version of mixing these notes up to get the melody. So see if you recognize this. So that's the first half. Hopefully that makes sense, what I'm doing. I'm just playing notes out of my pentatonic scale and I've listened to the song enough to know which notes it is. You can experiment with just a bit of guesswork and it won't take you very long, I trust your ears. So what I'll do now is I'll record at least the rhythm parts and the melody parts pumped together and you can see what's going on. Right, so what I'll do now is I'll play through both the chords, the riff, and then stick some melody over the top so you can get an idea for what's going on. And then you can practice all the different parts and we can put them all together. It'll be glorious. So. 